Hello everybody, my name is Anne McCluskey and I'm here tonight and um, I'm going to try and, and walk you through uh, the process of filling in uh, an MHRA yellow card uh, vaccine adverse event form. Um, as you know, these uh, genetic therapies are being rolled out now to vast swathes of, of, of the world's population, um, including to young people and children. And the MHRA yellow card reporting form was set up. Uh, we've used yellow cards in, in medicine for, for, for decades to report any adverse event from any medication. And 1.8 million, I think, was the tender price of, of the, the system, which was set up specifically to record problems which arose after the, the, the coronavirus vaccines were administered. As we know, these uh, injections are in clinical trials for another two years. So it's absolutely vital that every single event which occurs after following on after the, the injections are given is recorded and reported. And I can tell you from first-hand experience that at the moment this is simply not happening. Now, as we go through the, the, the MHRA reporting system, you can see that one of the reasons why it's not happening is they're very difficult and, and time consuming. And uh, well, I think if I was given 1.8 million, let's just be polite and say I could have come up with a better system. Uh, but I think it's really important that if, and as we know, um, for a variety of reasons, doctors and healthcare professionals aren't attributing cause and effect uh, to adverse reactions. Um, and where they are, as I say, I, I was talking to a casualty officer who was dealing, he had a waiting list of 90 patients. It's simply not possible to, to complete these appropriately. We know that whenever COVID hit, we were inundated with information and instructions about how we should treat and how we should record uh, deaths. But there's been very, very little information given, including to healthcare personnel, about how to, to fill in these, these adverse events. So um, MHRA, as you'll know, stands for Medicine and Healthcare's Regulatory Authority. And these people are tasked with the very, very important um, obligation to make sure that, that any uh, intervention, particularly one which is presented to an entire population, is safe. Uh, and that the benefits really should far outweigh uh, any any possibility of harm. Um, certainly in my clinical practice over the last year, um, that has not been the case. And we can see now, uh, and the data is coming in every day, that there are, even in, in the month of August and September, where normally the, the hospitals are quiet, uh, there are significant increases in all-cause mortality. Uh, and at least half of those are not uh, anything got to do with COVID. So they're happening for other reasons. It may be because the NHS has been mothballed for the last year and a half and people are presenting later or have had their, their illnesses neglected and not dealt with. Um, but there are serious concerns that at least part of that excess mortality is due to the rollout of these um, uh, genetic therapies, which, as we say, have no safety data in the medium or long term and the short term safety data is, is very concerning. So I think as as we have a civic responsibility where um, possible, and it's important that we act in honour, that we report things uh, honestly and as accurately as we can. Uh, you hear a lot of talk nowadays about the scientific method. And if people don't take ownership of this, this belongs to you. It was paid for, the 1.8 million it cost to set it up was paid for with your tax money. The system belongs to you and it is uh, important that it is used to keep you, your families, your communities and the people you love safe. Um, I think, in my opinion, uh, there are a lot, I, I mean, we hear all the time about people who just died suddenly. Okay, they were in their 70s, but they had been out doing the garden and just all of a sudden they just died. People getting heart attacks, strokes. I've heard of cases where people who haven't had, had epilepsy as children, haven't had a seizure for 20 years and all of a sudden their epilepsy has, has resurged uh, and has become problematic. People who have had cancers treated, which were quiescent and which now have recurred. All of that stuff uh, is, it needs to be reported. 
and it's also very important. The MHRA system is not anybody saying this was caused by the injection. What it is saying is simply in time this happened after the injection. You're not asked to attribute a causation or to, to make any accusations. It really is just a data collection exercise. So I invite you to let's have a wee look and we'll, we'll go through the thing and uh, I'll try and help you uh, get skilled up so that you can and it's important to understand that you don't have to be a doctor you don't have to be a nurse uh, all you have to be is acting in good faith on behalf of yourself if you've had the problem or somebody else that, that you know or love um, and as I say it, I think it's just really important that that everybody takes ownership of this in order that we can move forward in, 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 in a safe way so let's have a look at the system so what I'm going to do is just take you over to the computer and uh, we'll, we'll try and go through the website. So we're starting off here with a blank screen. The first thing you do is go into whatever browser it is you're using. And uh, let's look for the MHRA yellow card report and things. So for, I think, you know, let's just print yellow card and see where that takes us. Spoiler alert, I'm a useless typer. And here we are already. It just takes you straight into the MHRA yellow card scheme. And if you click on coronavirus, that is the part. The yellow card scheme obviously is used for reporting adverse effects from any medication. But this takes you straight into the coronavirus yellow card reporting site. So for the first time you're using it, uh, you have to register. You have to set up an account and a password. So you click on uh, sign in or register. And here we're going to register. We're going to click on register. Uh, and it asks you, are you a member of the public or a healthcare professional? So it's important to know you don't have to be a doctor or a nurse to use this system. This system was paid for with your money. It belongs to you and you need to take ownership of it. So member of the public, what best describes you? So let's be a carer or family member. I'm Mary Bloggs and uh, Joe Bloggs is my husband who suffered the adverse effect. So I'm going to be Mrs. And let's be Mary Bloggs. Oh, did that wrong, didn't I? You take out the blogs there and put it in for my last name. Yeah. We got it. And my email address can be Mary B L O G G S at G dot com. Uh, house number can be number one. Uh, address lane one now again because we're in County Antrim let's use the address of, of Antrim post office so that's at Castle Mall uh, address lane two is Castle Centre uh, it's in Antrim uh, and yeah let's get rid of that I warned you about the typing and the postcode is BT414AR. Uh, telephone number optional, whatever. If you want to give them a number, you certainly can. And let's click on the email. And that's the way that the MHRA will correspond with you. You have to set a password. And uh, the password has to have a capital letter and, and I guess nine characters or something like that. So let's go. Keep it simple. Yellow card. 2021 and confirm the password is yellow card 2021 and the privacy policy otherwise they won't let you continue and submit so that's your first bit you've set up your own account now so we're going to start a new report for my poor husband joe who hasn't done so well after his his, his pfizer vaccine so you go down and you select from the menu the pfizer vaccine and click start the report and that takes you into step one of a five-step process so the patient's initial joe is joe blogs he is the last time i checked he was male his nhs number now your your health and care number is on most hospital communications and you can usually get it from your doctor again it's optional you don't need it if you have it use it 
it's useful because it it, it, it means that the, the, the people in the MHRA can go into your records, but uh, it really doesn't matter if it if it, if you haven't got it. The patient's date of birth. He was born in in, in 1960 uh, on the 1st of January 1960. Uh, again, obviously this is uh, custom. Let's put Joe's about six ten, and he's he's the 70 kilogram man. And he is a paddy. Let's make him white Irish. So that's your patient sort of demographics, the person that you're writing the report about. So we move on now to the next step, step two. And here we're looking at suspect one, which is his, his Pfizer injection. So you enter the batch number if you know it. Uh, if you don't know it, it doesn't matter. You write not known. This is the field that you can't leave blank, but you have to write either the batch number or not known. And this is his first dose. Okay. And the vaccine was given again 1st of January of 2021 was his first dose. And we can add that. So then it says, let us know about the vaccines that you suspect to have caused the reactions. If you believe multiple vaccines contributed to the reaction, Add them one at a time and then select add. So we can move on now and add the reaction that we think. Sorry, other. No, we, we can we can move on and add uh, a, an adverse reaction for this one. And Joe uh, had problems with his balance straight after his, his first vaccine. So if you click on add and again, we have to re-enter the, the Pfizer vaccine. This is where it gets a bit, it, it gets very frustrating because you have to keep re-entering data that you've entered before. Batch number not known. Uh, I must say, if I was paid 1.8 million for devising the system, I would have made it a bit more user friendly than this one. Uh, so this is, is the second dose now. Uh, and the vaccine, the second dose was given on the third, let's say March, uh, March, uh, three months after the first one. And it was given on the first of March. And we can add that as well. So if he's had a booster or subsequent vaccinations, again, you just add them one at a time. If the person has had two different brands, as sometimes happens, so they've had a Pfizer vaccine and an AstraZeneca vaccine, again, add them separately and the drop down menu will allow you to do that. If they're taking other medication or have taken other vaccines, for example, if you had their flu vaccine, which may be very relevant, we know that in Italy, the people who had contracted the coronavirus seem to do much worse if they'd had their, their flu vaccine uh, earlier, and um, you add them in there. So Joe takes paracetamol because he's a bad back. And again, the, the, the thing will, will usually give you a, a drop down menu uh, so did I spell that properly? So yeah, we can see paracetamol here, the fourth one down. Um, and he takes that for pain. And again, the drop down menu will allow you, sorry. Will allow you to click on that just here. Okay. And again, the, the medication he's been on that for years so you know you can you can write whatever length of time he's been on it again you can add you can add that and if if there are other uh, medications that you think are relevant for example blood pressure medication blood thinning medication whatever you add them one at a time and you can go around as many as you need so we can move on now to the next step and here's step three out of five we have the suspect reactions so we've already entered the the patient demographics and we've entered the, the contact details for yourself and now we're moving on to add the, the, the suspect reaction. So let's write, uh, Joe has had problems with his balance uh, since uh, having his, his uh, injection. And we can see here, uh, there's various uh, options here, but I would suggest loss of balance, which is the second one down. And again, when did the reaction start? 2021. Uh, now here you can put, if it happened after the first uh, vaccine, you can write it on, on the dates between the two vaccines. But let's, for this purpose, move on and just say it happened after the second vaccine. So it happened uh, on, in, in the month of March uh, and it uh, 10 days after his JAG, so that'll be on the 10th of March. Uh, 
is it still occurring or has it resolved? No, it's still there. So um, we're, we're, we're down to uh, not recovered and not resolved. Again, we must act in honour. We must complete these, these things honestly. So if the reaction has resolved, then write the date that it has stopped. Uh, for very many patients, unfortunately, the, the, the problems they're having are, are, are quite long term. And as I say, I've seen very many patients whose balance has been affected as, you know, in months after their, their vaccine. And we don't know if they'll ever resolve. But again, that data can be collected at a future date. So let's add that. Again, you put the, the, the various reactions in one at a time. So Joe also had a stroke. Uh, and again, we can write uh, uh, stroke. You can write uh, uh, cerebrovascular accident. You can write uh, bleed and you know bleed, brain bleed. Whatever way you want to enter it, you it'll give you a, an option to, to add it. So let's just write stroke. He's had a stroke again. When did it start? It's tedious. You have to fill in the date. So again, March the 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 the, the, the month he had his vaccine, and it happened two weeks afterwards. So the fourteenth of March. Um, and it's still occurring. Joe has, has, has residual neurological problems as a consequence of, of a stroke. So it's not recovered and not resolved. Again, if it has recovered, uh, you can add that. So you can see you add things one at a time. And uh, it, it, I've done loads of these and I still have to, I still get confused and I still get mixed up. And it, it's, 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 not e it's not easy. But again, if you're using it, you, you, you'll get better at it. So... Now we'll move on. As I say, you can add as many as you need. Uh, uh, since having the vaccine, have you had a, a COVID test? Have you tested positive for COVID? So no, we've not had a COVID test. And again, if you want to write more detail about the reactions, you can fill it in there just in longhand. You don't need to be able to spell. You don't need to have to know medical terms. Just write what you think might be important in your own words. Don't worry about, about you know what it reads like. Grammar, spelling, doesn't matter. We're trying to just impart information to you. Again, moving on, if you know any investigations or tests conducted, if the patient has had, for example, an MRA scan or said blood test or whatever, you can fill those in there just again, uh, just longhand. And then how severely do you think the patient was affected? If the person had a slightly uncomfortable arm after the injection, you're going to click that one. But in Joe's case, Joe's had significant or long-term incapacity, so you can click that one. He has sought advice from a healthcare professional, and he was admitted to hospital with his stroke. Uh, and you can see the other options there. Uh, you know, for example, that, that we really don't know that these are safe in pregnancy. There's just simply not that the, the initial studies didn't look at, at cases of pregnancy, uh, and and you know that the. the the, the preliminary data is available now, but unless everything is reported, we're not going to see patterns. Again, unfortunately, some people uh, uh, have died maybe weeks, months, days after getting their vaccine. We're not, it's important, we're not attributing cause and effect here. We're simply reporting things that have happened, and it's up to somebody else to try and, and, and join the dots and uh, see whether that's uh, whether patterns are emerging. So if it caused death again, click. Next step then, uh, step four out of five, we're getting there. Uh, if you have any illnesses or taken medications, particularly that might affect your immune system. So here you can see a drop down menu if people have inflammatory bowel disease, if they've had a transplant, if they've HIV or you know whatever, you can click on those and then fill in underneath on the box uh, any other information which may be relevant in that. Um, again, uh, for a lot of people, there may not be anything else, but if there's anything there, that, that, then that you, you fill in the medical history there. And the next step, step five out of five, you'll be glad to hear, is whether the patient has ever had COVID. Uh, so we go down here to their, their, their COVID status. Have they symptoms? No, unsure. Uh, yes, no, unsure. Whichever you think is appropriate. Um, uh, have they tested positive for COVID? Have they had a COVID test? No, a negative COVID test. Whatever one is, is, is relevant. The date of the COVID test, if you know it, again, it's optional, so we'll not go through filling that in. And are they enrolled in a clinical study or trial? 
And I'm afraid for this one, the only answer that you can fill in here is yes, because we know that these injections are in clinical trials for another two years. So everybody who accepts or uh, for whatever reason feels obliged to take these injections is participating in a clinical trial, whether or not they were informed of that at the time they were given it and whether or not they were informed of it at the time they, they, they filled in their consent form. So in that box, I always write ongoing. Uh, ongoing COVID vaccine trials. And obviously I'm not going to submit this because this is a fictitious patient, but at that point you, you press submit, that goes into the MHRA database and they will then in, in, a couple of days later send you out an email with the details of the report that you've submitted and uh, you can print that off and, and give it to the person concerned or keep it yourself if, if you're doing the report for yourself. So as I say, once you've done a few, you get better at them. Uh, you know, making a mistake is okay as long as it's done in good faith. I just think it's really important that people take ownership of this system and make it work for you because, believe me, if you don't do the reports, they're not going to be done. It is reckoned worldwide for the European system, for the British, the, the MHRA system, and for the, the VAERS system that only between 1% and 10% of cases are reported. From my experience, I would suspect it's nearer the, the, the first figure. Uh, and unless we reliably report these things, we're simply not going to see patterns. And if we don't see the patterns, then we're not going to be able to keep safe people safe uh, now and more importantly into the future and even more importantly again for our children and subsequent generations. So I hope that was helpful. Practice with it, um, you know, and, and, and get used to using it and, and make sure that, that you do uh, use it and, and maybe help other people uh, to uh, submit data because knowledge is power and uh, if we don't have the, the, the facts then, then we won't be able to draw any conclusions. So thank you for listening and good night everybody.